every one of us is differently capable when it comes to the outside world. But when it comes to the inner dimensions, all of us are equally capable. It is just that most people have never paid attention. They still believe that by fixing what's around them, life will be fine. Um, I got a, a little bit technical question in terms of, uh, I know, the boundary. When you say boundaries, probably the memory is one of the biggest boundary. And you mentioned Patanjali earlier. Patanjali, in a funny way, he says, Anubhuta Vishaya, Asamba Moshaha Smutaya, as a thing that, as a part of a chitta. And again, at the same time, he says, Shraddha, Virya, Smuti, Samadhi, Prakna, Purva, Kaitare, Sham. So he wants it for you to have the memory. At the same time, it is the boundary we have to come out of. Can you please explain? Oh, you like the question, eh? <laughs> <laughs> It'll want to be a good answer. The Let, expectations clearly are high. Let's chew some fat on this one. <laughs> yeah, there you go. In the middle of whoop whoop. <laughs> <coughs> See, you are who you are only because of memory. There's conscious memory, there is unconscious memory, articulate and inarticulate levels of memory. There is genetic memory, there is evolutionary memory, there is elemental memory, atomic memory, e everything is built into this. Muscle memory. Hmm? Muscle memory. Oh, that is what I said, inarticulate memory, it is, it is there. Your entire head to toe is just memory. You don't remember consciously how your great-great-great-grandfather or grandmother looked ten generations ago, but his or her nose is sitting on your face right now, it's not forgotten for a moment. Hello? It even remembers the skin tone, how your forefathers were a million years ago, still remembers everything, isn't it? So your structure is like this, because of memory. Your body is memory. Every cell in your body has more memory than your brains has, a million times more actually. So this, y what you call as me, is just memory. If you lose your memory, you don't know who you are, isn't it? Hmm? And the only thing that most people are suffering is their memory. <laughs> See, it's only the human beings who have such a vivid sense of conscious memory. Even a grasshopper has memory, but conscious memory is very little in him. But you have a vivid sense of conscious memory because of this life and life's experience is rich. Of course, today all the memory is on your phone uh, <laughs> But even those machines that we created of computers and phones and whatever is only to enhance our memory, isn't it? Because we saw the value of memory. So memory is the maker of who you are. You are who you are only because of your memory. If there's no memory, right now if your memory goes away, you don't know who is your mother, who is your father, who is your husband, who is your wife, who is your children, where you belong, your nation, your race, religion, nothing. Everything is in your memory, isn't it so? Including your God and devil, all in your memory, yes or no? If you lose memory, you don't know anything. So memory is a tremendous possibility. At the same time, it is a boundary. It's a certain knowledge that you've accumulated, information that you've accumulated. So in yoga, we have a, a very powerful tool. This will be a little hard for you to chew. Hmm? See, your knowledge, you are well educated. Let us say, you studied all the libraries on the planet. Still, your knowledge is a minuscule compared to this cosmos, isn't it so? If you identify with that minuscule of knowledge, you will become a minuscule because what you identify with, you become that in some way, isn't it? Hmm? Whatever you identify with strongly, you become that. If you identify with your minuscule knowledge, you become a minuscule existence. But 
our ignorance is boundless. If you identify with your ignorance, you will become boundless because there are no borders for your ignorance. Your knowledge has a boundary, your ignorance has no boundary, isn't it? But it takes a certain amount of dispassion and involvement in the life that you are to come to this space where you identify with your ignorance. If you identify with your ignorance, your intelligence cannot sleep, it'll be always on. See, right now if I ask any one of you to walk from here to there, you will effortlessly walk because you can see. Suppose we turn off the lights and it's pitch dark. Now if I ask you to walk, now you're super alert, isn't it? Hello? You're super alert. Matt was telling me when he's batting, it's like meditation because it's not a ball, it's a mizel. It's on the television, it's a ball. On the pitch, it's a mizel, somebody's trying to knock your head off <laughs> Yes? It's a hard ball, it's coming anywhere between 125 to 150, 60 kilometers per hour and it doesn't come straight, it pitches and takes its own shape, whichever way it wants or whichever way the other monster intends. <laughs> it's a hard game, people are watching on the television and thinking cricket is some nice game. It's a very hard game and it's a misel. You just have a split second, if you're not super alert, you're gone. Either you go to the pavilion or uh, go to the hospital. <laughs> These days there is a helmet, you don't go to the morgue. One time they went to the morgue, now they go to the hospital with a broken bone or something. So, this is the same. The moment you are… you do not know what's going to happen right now, you're super, super alert, isn't it? Hello? It's pitch dark, you don't know where your foot is going, super alert or no? This is what ignorance means, this is the power or this is the intelligence of ignorance that if you identify with your ignorance, your intelligence cannot sleep, even if your body sleeps, it cannot sleep, it's always on. But if you identify with your knowledge, it sleeps because knowledge is a kind of conclusion you have drawn. Once you draw a conclusion, you will sleep. Sleep is… is a shorter version of death, isn't it, in a way? <laughs> Hello? You are dead to the world. Well, you come back tomorrow morning, but at that point you don't exist, the world doesn't exist when you're fast asleep. So, in a way you're dying, how long you die in a day is up to you. If you're dying eight hours a day, that means uh, one third of your life you've been dead. So, if your intelligence becomes super alert, you will see one first thing that will happen to you is your sleep quota will come down dramatically. Because you become more and more conscious because you are identified with your ignorance. If you understand, I do not know. If you really, it sinks into you that I do not know, now this is a tremendous possibility. Only if you see I do not know, the longing to know, the seeking to know and the possibility of knowing becomes a reality, isn't it? Everything I do not know, I just believe. It doesn't matter who said it, Patanjali said it, anybody said it. You don't know. Hello? Isn't it? You don't know. When you do not know, if you really allow this to sink into you, actually you do not know a damn thing about anything in this universe, that's a fact, isn't it? For practical purposes we know, but existentially we don't know a damn thing. Now, you are Id naturally identified with your in ignorance means, naturally you are a seeker, you can't help. Always your intelligence is probing everything that it sees because you know that you do not know. But reading high school textbook, if you think you know entire world, then there's a problem. Lot of people have gotten into this state in the name of science. They read hi high school textbook and they think they're scientists. This happened. This happened in UK. Uh, it's a social situation. Oh, why? We'll shift it to Australia. 
the scene. Came a long way. <laughs> a social situation where uh, a lot of people, socialites were there, but a scientist also was there, he was not dressed like them, with not much care to his outward appearance. So they sat at the dinner table, a very high fashion socialite lady sat next to him. And uh, may I ask you, what do you do? Uh, he said, I study science. Oh, I was done with that in my high school <laughs> So as scientist understands, he's still studying science. Only others think he's a scientist. He knows he is studying science because the more you explore, the more you realize how ignorant you are. It's not that more knowledgeable you will become, more you realize how profound is your ignorance, how boundless is your ignorance. So, this entire dimension of moving into an intelligence which is beyond memory, the first and foremost step is this, that you are not identified with what little you know, you are identified with that which you do not know. Now your intelligence is on, slowly it will become free from memory. Because memory means repetitiveness, isn't it? Hello? Memory means repetitiveness, the same things happening again and again. If memory determines the nature of your experience, which usually does and for ninety percent or more, of the people, their memory decides the nature of their experience. For this we say traditionally in India, karma case. You are sitting here, stomach is full or empty, whichever way, nothing wrong, nobody is shooting bullets at you, you are fine, but you are little. Why? You are chewing your own fat. Am I getting it? Yeah. Maybe that's where it came from <laughs> <laughs> So, you're chewing your own memory and making yourself happy or unhappy, whichever way, both ways, your karma. Karma means action. Action means the residual action which remains within you is memory. Memory is not just conscious, it is at all levels. This residual memory is right now deciding the trajectory of your life. To become free from that is a whole effort, which in complicated language he said, and you all liked it. The important thing is, you break free from this residual impact. If you live out of your memory, no new possibilities are there. You will do the same things in permutations and combinations, but the same thing. If something absolutely new has to happen to you, you must be beyond your karmic memory, everything that's stored in you, your genetic memory, your evolutionary memory, you rose beyond that. Now you have a completely new vision of life. This is something that is possible for every human being. Only thing is they've never paid attention to that. They've just not paid attention to those aspects, that's all. Otherwise, it is not the exclusive right of any special… specially made human beings. It's equally possible, I want you to understand this. When it comes to external situations, maybe all of you cannot uh, take a cricket bat and do what Matt does. Maybe you cannot take a motorcycle and do what I do <laughs> Or maybe you can't run like somebody else or you can't do something else like someone else. When it comes to external realities, we are all differently capable, isn't it? Hello? Is it a wrong word to use on you? <coughs> Every one of us is differently capable when it comes to the outside world. But when it comes to the inner dimensions, all of us are equally capable. It is just that most people have never paid attention. They still believe that by fixing what's around them, life will be fine. But I want you to understand this much. Compared to how people lived in this world a few generations ago, let's say a thousand years ago or even a hundred years ago, today in terms of comfort and convenience, are you not way, way, way ahead? Nobody even dreamt these things were possible, yes or no? But still we are complaining. So much arrangement, so much arrangement, so much arrangement that we're ripping the planet apart, but still, can you claim, are you more joyful 
are more blissful than how people were hundred years ago. Can you? You're more comfortable for sure. You know conveniences that nobody knew. What even royalty could not afford? All of you are having, most of you are driving uh, chariots with four hundred, six hundred horses. <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> But life has not changed, you must understand, it doesn't matter how much arrangements you make. And also you must remember, in the end there is no container service, this is just for your information. There's no container service, because most homes have turned into warehouses. Just reminding you. <laughs>